Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at some solid state drive coolers. Yes, you did hear me correctly, SSD coolers. Well, to be more, you know, straight to the point, M.2 coolers, because these little puppies can get quite hot. Now this may seem like a, a strange statement for me to make, but it's not very often I make a video or I look into something and research something that I've genuinely like got an active interest in. Yes, I play with lots and lots of hardware, but sometimes I go out of my way to get hold of something because I just want to know what it's like. Or, let's be frank, peeps whispering in your ear, maybe I actually want one for myself. So recently I got an email from Aqua Computer. It was just a generic email telling me about that they release new products and then we run the news on the website and then we publish it to you on Facebook and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, so you get used to that. If you've not seen the news on OC3D, it's legendary. Anyway, so um, this popped up and I was instantly, I, I emailed them asking if there was a possibility for a sample. Now the first one is quite simply this. Now the thermal pad doesn't come attached, it comes separate. I've already tested them, I've already played with them so I can get my results so that I can talk to you. And it's essentially a clip, it, sorry, it's a heat sink, it's just a piece of aluminium. I'm getting good at saying the N, aluminium. Anyway, and it goes onto your solid state drive like this and it has the thermal pad on and then there is a, uh, what they call protective tape. Now this sticks on, but I didn't actually uh, stick it on myself because let's face it, I need to take this off because I've tested both of these. Both of these you say? Both Tom? Oh yes, there's two boxes. So this was one, and anyway, I'm gonna show you uh, how it fits and everything, but there's a little clip that goes around. But they also sent me this big, huge, massive one as well. So this is the PCI Express one, which uh, clips into your motherboard. Now, if you were to get this, you do need to think about the PCI Express layout on your motherboard. So if you were to drop this in, for argument's sake, one of the graphics card slots, which is one of the PCI Express 3 slots, which you'll need for full speed M.2, on like a Z270 or even one of your Ryzen motherboards, then you are going to decrease the lanes that are available on your graphics card, normally from 16 to eight. But if you've got an X99 motherboard, which is what I uh, tested this on, you're gonna have ample lanes there anyway, so it's less of an issue, but it's something to consider. Um, uh, and there, there is a slot normally at the bottom of the Ryzen motherboards and at the bottom of the um, Z270 boards that goes to the chipset rather than from the CPU lanes. But you do, do need to consider that if you plug one of these in that, that's actually PCI Express 2 and not PCI Express 3. It's all very complicated. You'll need to look at the block diagram for your board. But anyway, so there's this one as well. Back to the first one, we will look at the other. So this has a clip, uh, the um, tape that goes underneath. And then you have two clips like this. And essentially, you just get the one without the big... I'm going to try and do this in front of you. So that goes around there. Don't forget, I'm trying to film this and fit this at the same time. So it was never going to be, you know, perfect. After all, it's me. And then essentially, you just give it a bit of a push. That's what she said. And it should slip in. <laughs> anyway, right. So now we've got that. Now, the re you're going to be saying to me, Tom, there's two. Why have you only fitted one? Well, this is just a little hint. If you've got a drive like the Samsung that's in there, there's a 960 Evo in that one, that won't have any chips on the back. Now, this has quite clearly got two chips at the back because it's a Corsair drive. There's nothing really down here. And on the other side of the drive, you've got two chips. And then up here, you've got the controller. Well, if you uh, try and get this clip, over the memory chips, it can be a bit tight. It will go on, it will go on. But you have to be quite careful and it can be a little bit of a struggle, but it will go on. What I did with mine is I put it in some warm water to make it a bit um, uh, more pliable. Obviously I didn't fit it wet and then it, I could get it on and I could give it a bit of a push. But the reason why I've shown you this way is if you just put it in the middle, past the chips, I actually didn't find any temperature difference from running uh, one to running two. 
But obviously, if you've got the Samsung where you've just got a completely plain back, again, I'll show you in a second, you can get the two clips on and they're actually really easy to fit. It's just much more difficult over the top of the memory chips if they are on the back. Anyway, so you have that one. Uh, one thing I would say, spend a little bit of time getting your thermal paste sorted out, but that's essentially it. And when it's fitted, it does look all kind of nice. The uh, B-roll that I got, for this one was literally with this single one because I tested the Corsair last. Anyway, with this one, <coughs> essentially we have, just to point out straight away, we have a little switch down here, which we'll talk about in a moment. But PCI Express three times four down here, you can see there is a little band that runs all the way around the outside, which again, we'll talk about in a moment. It's got a vented back, but it doesn't really, um, you know, particularly matter. But uh, you could easily pop this off and paint this black. Even, to be honest with you, you wouldn't even need to worry about spraying it if you're that fussed. You could just get a pot of uh, Humbro enamel and smash some black over the top of it. And as long as you don't start um, scratching it too much when you're fitting it, it should be all right. But anyway, you get a lovely, massive heat sink over the top, but you also get one round the back. There are four screws that hold it all together. And you do have the little SSD sign. Anyway, back to the on off SSD down here. This is actually uh, all LEDs and it does all light up. So the first one, as I said to you, is just on. Now when I did fit it, I was surprised that it was orange. So it may not be for everyone, then you do have the uh, SSD um, button, which basically means it flashes with the activity light, and then there's obviously off. Um, but this one, this little SSD light here, this one flashes all the time, doesn't matter what you have the little button down the end set to. So essentially you need to either like orange or be willing to turn it off. Um, but if I was to, just whiz it open for you quickly. There are four screws that hold it all together. And I've just finished testing on this. It's actually still feeling a little warm, which is kind of nice because you know it's doing its job because if it's feeling warm, it, the, uh, the heat is obviously getting transferred from the drive to the, the heat sinks. So if I take it off, now there is thermal pads on this, don't forget. So. I'm just going to show you. So this is the, the bit that lights up. You've got your thermal pad there to help transfer heat into the main bulk of the heat sink. But I'm just going to take the drive out totally so that I can show you because there is a secondary heat sink as well. And that is basically a carbon copy exactly the same as the first one that we looked at, which we were holding on with clamps before. So there we go. So there's the, the other one. Well, I say a carbon copy, very, very similar to the other one. So what that does is that does mean that you get contact with the heat sink from, you have the big section on the front, but it then does have a secondary section uh, covering the back. Now, the reason why I've shown you these two drives is because they are very different. I've already spoken to you about the two chips that we have down here, but on the back of the Samsung, there are none. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to give it a good old whiz over so that we could see um, uh, which one, you know, whether one favoured the other or anything like that. But we can see the LEDs around the outside here. Now, if I zoom you in, they are SMDs, they are very small, they would be an absolute ball ache to change unless you were a master solderer. So I think we're pretty much stuck with uh, orange ones. Although if Aqua Computer want to make a white version, I would actually like one personally, or even red lights would be okay, but I prefer white because then I would use them <coughs> in the uh, review videos. Because this putting this in and out is a lot safer sometimes than um, using the tiny little drives. But anyway, <clears throat> so oh, you can also see the lights around the outside here that were lighting that up. Anyway, when it came to uh, performance, we're just gonna talk about reductions in temperature because that's what I think is uh, more viable. With the Corsair um, uh, MP500 on this one, 
it actually got, and to be fair, I was using um, a crystal disc mark and it's the very first test on it. And essentially I was just sat there constantly keep running it and I was doing one with uh, five, uh, sorry, 50 megabyte files and then I was doing one with 16 gigabyte files and I was just constantly running them and running them and running them. So it's beyond what you would normally do with a normal uh, use in your rig. But uh, with the Corsair, we had a 12 degree reduction on the small one. But with this one, and I think it's basically because of the, um, the, the extra plate on the back, there was actually a 38 degree reduction in temperatures with this one. With the 960 Evo, with the small one, there was a 10 degree reduction. And with the big one, there was a 30 degree reduction. So they both offer very good uh, cooling reductions. I mean, when you consider that that is just a little heat sink there, then I think it done remarkably well. I would actually like to see, because this is the one I think most people are gonna buy, just to pop it in their motherboard so that they've got a little bit of extra cooling. I'm, not, I'm gonna move these boxes so that the camera stops being a spaz. Anyway, I think this is gonna be the one that most people are gonna buy, because essentially it's a bit, you know, it's more accessible. You don't need to put it in a PCI Express um, bay or anything like that. But the, <clears throat> the other thing, I think they could probably get away with making a slightly taller finned one as well, because um, unless it's going underneath a graphics card, which this one is perfect for, um, I think if you're just gonna have it, um, uh, <clears throat> if you're just gonna have it in your board, then I think that'd be absolutely fine. But th the other thing, this is something else to think about. This was below the graphics card on our test system, which was my GPU test rig, basically, because I've got some of the graphics card testing files on that. And it meant that I could make sure this had full lanes and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, um, you do need to make sure because if you use the PC, if you use the M.2 slot above your graphics card, please do remember that your backplate still does get incredibly hot. So you do need to consider that you may end up, if you ran something like this, end up warming this with your graphics card. So do look at your temperatures. I To follow the temperatures with mine, I use a hardware monitor and you can just look at the drop downs. So maybe consider moving it, if you've got two slots on your board, moving it around to see which one works best. Um, but if you've not got it above your graphics card, a bigger heatsink would probably drop the temperatures down even more. Now, <clears throat> I was looking at making something like this myself and I was going to um, thermal epoxy the heatsink over the top, completely ruining my warranty. Um, but obviously with something like this, it's uh, quite simple, you can unclip it, doesn't void your warranty. It's epic, absolutely epic. Now it may only be a small thing, but I love it. And I'm glad that I asked to get it in because now not only do I have this one, I'm going to go and buy two more unless Aqu um, uh, Aqua Computer see this and decide to send me two more. But anyway, because I genuinely want to keep this for reviews and then I would like to put one in my main rig and my server as well, because they've both got um, uh, M.2s in. And uh, on my X99 Deluxe, which is in my main rig, it's actually a stand-up one as well. And there's a fan about that far away from it. So it's going to absolutely love um, a bit of extra cooling like this. So I genuinely think they're epic and um, they may only be small, but I still think it's uh, an enthusiast award winner because you'd have to be an enthusiast to go out of your way to look, to try and drop your temps of your M.2 drive. And I think they've done a great job of it without charging the earth and without it looking kind of stupid or over the top. So I prefer, I do prefer this one more. This one definitely has its place. I think because of the fact it you do need to use um, the PCI Express on the board, unless you're running one of the boards that adds in extra PCI Express lanes for you, um, then I, I think this is probably limited to either people that need lots and lots of drives or are running um, X99, but it's it's so <clears throat> much better at cooling it because there's just so much more material. But you do just have to keep um, in mind, you know, kind of the, the drawbacks, the PCR Express, the side, the fact it does use up a lane and the uh, orange lights. But I still do like it. And this one I would give the OC3D approved award to. 
This one is clearly the winner. Uh, and I'd actually like to see if they did do, like I said, if they did do a slightly taller one in the end, for those of you that aren't going to be running it underneath a graphics card or directly above um, uh, a graphics card. Because if it's uh, one of the normal boards, like the one that I showed you earlier, where it sat down the bottom, a bigger heatsink would probably work wonders. So I actually enjoyed the few hours that I was testing these today because it meant I wasn't um, doing graphics cards or Ryzen testing. It's been amazing. So thank you very much to Aqua Computer again. You can buy them all over the place on the net. It's easy to um, uh, find a, a stockist, stockist somewhere local to you. Have a look at their um, uh, website directly so you can go and have a look at the other stuff that they do as well. Thank you very much to them. It's not very often I say stuff like that. They've genuinely not paid me or anything. It was just, I, you know, I literally asked them and it's the first time I've done anything for them as well. But they make some properly, properly sexy water blocks. So maybe if I'm extra nice, you may see some water cooling goodness in the not too distant future. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan, off to make his dinner now because it's quite late, out. Thank you. Oh, not done a ding for a while. Bing.